Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog and I've got a video for you today that is near and dear to my heart. This is one that many of you have been asking for and I couldn't wait to do it for you. So these are reasons why you should take a solo trip to Walt Disney World ASAP. I go solo to Disney World all the time because when I go there I work and I have meetings and my schedule usually isn't conducive to bringing my whole family down there with me because I have a five-year-old and he tends to not do so well when I need to work and have meetings and so it's easier to just leave everybody at home and I go down to Disney World for a few days and get a lot done. So I've gotten really accustomed to solo travel in Disney World and I actually really love solo travel in Disney World. There are times that I would choose to be solo versus be with my family or with my friends, no offense anybody, but I really enjoy it and I have a good time sort of relaxing in that context. So I wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks and reasons why you might want to take a solo trip to Disney World because I know many of you are thinking about it or considering it or have the opportunity to do it. So why would you take a solo trip to Disney World? First of all, maybe you're a Disney diehard and your family just doesn't want to go on another trip to Disney World or you have some time off of work and your family doesn't. Or maybe you actually have a conference coming up in Disney World. They have lots of conferences in Disney World and you can't take the kids out of school to join you. So you're going to head down to Disney World by yourself for a couple of days. So there's lots of opportunities for people to take solo trips to Disney World. So whether you fit into one of those categories or you're just thinking of taking a solo trip anyway, just for fun, hopefully these things will help you out. So here are some reasons why I love taking solo trips. First of all, I get to make all the decisions. You get to do things on a whim, basically whenever you want to. You can get up super early, go to an early breakfast reservation, get to Magic Kingdom to see that opening show, or you can sleep in and not have to worry about rushing anywhere like sometimes you do when your family's with you. You can sleep in, you can sort of chill out, you can stay up late, whatever works for you, you can do because you're the only one there. It's awesome. <laughs> you don't have to wrangle kiddos or friends or family, so you can change your plans around as much as you want. Traveling solo means you can be a lot more spontaneous and flexible, which is awesome. And it's also something that hardly ever exists at Disney World anymore because you have to plan so much in advance. So being solo means you actually have a lot more flexibility to do things that you wouldn't necessarily get to do if you had to sort of wrangle a whole family to get into a particular fast pass or a particular dining reservation or watch a particular parade. Another reason why it's great to take a solo trip to Disney World is you can try new things. So maybe your travel group that you travel with never stops for photos with characters, but you've always wanted to. So you can spend your day meeting all the characters you want to meet. Or maybe your group is full of picky eaters, but you want to try more exotic food at Disney World. This is a great opportunity to sort of break outside that box and try lots of different international or ethnic food items in Disney World. Maybe you're the only thrill seeker in your group. Nobody wants to ride rock and roller coaster. Nobody wants to ride Tower of Terror when they're with you, but if you're all by yourself, you can ride those rides as many times as you want. And one thing I particularly really enjoy is I get to do things I wouldn't normally do with the whole family because it costs too much for everyone to do the thing. So things like backstage tours or after hours, going to an after hours event at one of the parks or early morning magic, those are so expensive. Or even the um, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party or Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, those get really pricey when the whole family's doing it. So if you're there on a solo trip, you can do those things much less expensively because it's just you. Okay, the next reason why you might want to take a solo trip to Disney World is just that flexibility factor. You can change your plans completely if a flight of passage fast pass comes up. So if you've been planning to spend the day in Epcot and you had a reservation for dinner or something like that, but a flight of passage fast pass comes up randomly in the middle of the day, you can just ditch Epcot, run over to Animal Kingdom. Don't worry about your reservation because you're not going to lose $60 like you would if your whole family was there. You're just going to lose 10, so it's no big deal and you can run over Ride Flight of Passage and maybe even make it back to Epcot for your reservation. But you've got that kind of flexibility. You can eat a later dinner if the restaurant that you want to eat at only has a reservation late or an earlier dinner or something like that. So you've got that flexibility, that spontaneity, and you can change your plans on a dime if you need to. It's really, really nice. It's almost too nice because now when I go with my whole family, I get kind of frustrated that I'm not able to sort of change those plans that quickly. 
All right, another great reason to go to Disney World solo, you can save some money or you can splurge on yourself. So when you're traveling with the whole family, ticket prices, food costs, merchandise racks up and it's super, super expensive. But if it's just you, you can either choose to save some serious money, stay in a value resort, just get a one day ticket and spend the rest of your time in Disney Springs or something like that. Or you can actually splurge on yourself, stay in a deluxe resort, spend all that money that would normally go to paying for tickets and food for your whole family on yourself and maybe take yourself to the spa or on one of those backstage tours because it's not going to cost as much as it would with your whole family so you can splurge on yourself a little bit. Another thing that's great about taking a solo trip to Disney World is you can stay where you want. You don't have to worry about accommodating your whole family. So maybe when you bring the whole family, you have to spring for a family suite or two rooms when you travel with the whole group. But when you travel solo, you can put that money towards a deluxe resort, stay somewhere you haven't been before, but you've always wanted to stay. Or you can choose to stay in a value resort or a moderate resort. If you always have to stay in a Disney Vacation Club villa or something like that, you can stay at a different resort that you've never tried before. Also, you can eat where you want. This is one of my favorite tips. Now, a lot of people are nervous about going to restaurants solo. They're kind of freaked out. They've never eaten by themselves and they don't understand kind of how that will work. So they sort of relegate themselves to quick service the whole time that they're in Disney World solo. Well, don't do that. That doesn't have to be how it is. I eat in table service restaurants alone all the time, even in signature restaurants or high-end restaurants or expensive restaurants. And it's not awkward. It's not weird. Cast members are really great at checking in and chatting with you. You can always bring something to read, or if you choose restaurants that have a lounge, you can sit at the bar and order off the full menu, chat with a the bartender. There are some restaurants that actually have open kitchens and you can sit and sort of watch the chefs cook and that's really, really fun and they sometimes chat with you and every once in a while they'll bring you a little sample of something they're working on, which is really nice. And consider booking somewhere where you can dine with a beautiful view, somewhere like Paddlefish in Disney Springs where you have that great water view, or Ohana where you've got the view of the fireworks, or that gorgeous water view of Seven Seas Lagoon. Another favorite of mine of Chefs de France where you can eat with a view of the World Showcase Promenade and you can sort of people watch the whole time that you're dining. It's really fun. Another benefit to dining solo is you don't need to worry about making as many reservations as when you travel with your group because if you use that lounge or bar dining Tip, you might be able to get into places like California Grill without having a reservation. You just go upstairs to the lounge or sit at the bar and you can order from the full menu. And if it's just one person being accommodated, it's a lot easier when that lounge gets busy to find a place for one person than it is to find a place for four people or five people or six people. And again, you're much more flexible. So you can kind of just look for whatever reservations happen to be available and go wherever sounds best because you don't have to worry about accommodating your whole family. You can just pull up your My Disney Experience account, say what's available in the next hour, and go wherever sounds interesting. And if you do get the chance to take a solo trip to Disney World, be sure to take some time for yourself. Take a little bit of downtime to relax if that's your personality, if that's something you enjoy. So go to the spa, get a treatment for yourself. Enjoy a resort day with room service breakfast, some time by the pool, dig into that novel you've been wanting to read, or do the morning yoga that they offer. Some of the resorts have fun painting classes, like the boardwalk offers a painting class. So there's a lot of really cool, fun things you can do if you're traveling solo and you have a more flexible schedule. But try to take a little time for yourself to do something that you are gonna love and enjoy that you wouldn't necessarily do if your family or your friends were with you. All right, moving on to the rides. Now, don't forget that traveling solo means you can take advantage of the single rider lines. Disney World offers single rider lines for Test Track, Expedition Everest, Rock and Roller Coaster, and these lines are usually much shorter than the regular lines. They won't necessarily have no weight, but if the weight is short, you can use them to your advantage. Also, if you pair up single rider lines with your Fast Pass reservations, you can take advantage of short weights for all the headliners. So get a Fast Pass for Soarin' and do single rider for Test Track, and you've already got two of the headliners done right away. It's also much easier to get last minute show spots when you are traveling solo in Walt Disney World. So if you want to get a place to watch the parade or the fireworks, it's much easier to kind of find a place for one person than a place for six people. So here are a few tips for solo travel. If you are traveling solo, here's some things to remember. First up, speak up. People are usually really nice about holding your spot in line or taking your picture at a photo spot. If you need someone to help you, just ask someone to help you. People are usually pretty cool about it and really nice about it. 
Next, be spontaneous. Book a few must-do fast passes and meals and spend the rest of the time doing what sounds like fun in the moment. Don't worry about over planning. Don't worry about getting everything done on your schedule. You have your days completely to yourself and you can make whatever choices you want. So be spontaneous, do some interesting things that you didn't expect to do. Again, be sure to people watch. Now this is especially good when you're having meals. Situate yourself where you can watch folks outside or you can watch folks through a window. You'd be amazed the kinds of things that you see in Disney World when you're people watching. It's a great place to people watch. So again, I'm not saying to buy a ticket to the parks just to go sit there and watch people, um, although that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. But I think during meals is a good opportunity to kind of get in your people watching. Next tip is to treat yourself to souvenirs, snacks, or experiences you wouldn't normally get to have or do. So when you're there with your family, you're not necessarily gonna indulge in a giant cupcake or buy that Mickey jewelry you've always wanted to buy. But when you're there by yourself, treat yourself. And then finally, talk to cast members, especially the cultural representatives in Animal Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Lodge and in Epcot about their countries and about their experiences in Orlando. I find it really fun to talk to them about where they've been in the United States during their time working for Disney and where they're gonna go, where they really want to explore. Because I used to live in New York City and a lot of the cast members I've talked to want to go to New York City and so I can help them out with some tips and listen to the things they're thinking about doing and it's really fun to have those conversations. I also love to talk to them about their home countries, where they're from, why they decided to come to Disney World. So those are fun interactions to have. So don't forget to talk to a few of the cast members about their experiences and what they have to share. Okay, so if you're starting to plan that solo trip, we've narrowed down some great times for you to go if you're by yourself. First up, the Food and Wine Festival. Lots of locals come over by themselves for this popular event. And remember, this one runs from August into November. And since it's crowded, people will always be sharing those high top tables, so it's easy to strike up a conversation. I've had a lot of great conversations when I've been eating around at the festivals. Another good time to go for Run Disney events. A lot of people will come to the Run Disney events solo because they just want to run the Princess Half Marathon or they want to run the Wine and Dine 10K. So you won't be the only one there by yourself. And runs are great icebreakers. You can meet lots of others who enjoy the same things you do. And remember, even busy times at Disney World aren't as difficult if you're by yourself because you have so much flexibility and you have so much opportunity to kind of pivot and change your plans if you need to or want to. If a particular park is getting overwhelmingly busy, you can head to a different one or head somewhere else or see who has a fast pass open and grab that. So you might not be able to snag as many last minute at reservations, but you'll still be able to take advantage of single rider lines and some bar and lounge seating to keep things a little more spontaneous, even if you're there during a busy time. So those are some great reasons to take a solo trip, some great tips and tricks when you're on a solo trip, and some great times to go on a solo trip to Walt Disney World. I hope this has been helpful to those of you who've been asking about this specifically. I know a lot of you are considering going on a solo trip or you're headed down for a conference and you're not quite sure what to do. So absolutely let us know in the comments if you've been on a solo trip to Walt Disney World. What did you find to be fun or interesting? Tell us some of your experiences. We'd love to hear them. So please let us know in the comments your tips and tricks for going solo to Disney World. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. We'd love for you to like this video. Please subscribe. Go ahead over and hit the subscribe button or you can hit that little DFB logo in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe really quickly as well. And you can also hit the notification bell so that we can let you know the next time a video goes up from TFB Guide. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog and we'll see you real soon.